Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here. <clears throat> Today's Friday, Friday the 10th of May, 2024. Thank you for tuning in. I got a lot of information to go over. Uh, picture if there was a guy who had some sort of a Toyota Land Runner or something like that. Some One of those Toyotas uh, that were really, really trucks that were really, really reliable. Some of them they made. And picture he's an outdoorsman, you know. And he enjoys uh, going off and adventuring into remote locations. Okay, so he always trusts his truck. And his truck never, ever fails him. He keeps it well kept. He, he takes it in the mechanic shop every six months and, or every four months even. And gets it gone over and, and uh, checks everything. Makes sure everything's working good in it. So he doesn't, he trucks this truck so much and he's had it for years and he's went on so many adventures with it. And it's been so reliable that he has total faith in it. So he doesn't even carry a canteen <laughs> or any food in the truck or anything, you know. He just trusts the truck because the truck's always there for him. So he doesn't even carry a radio or anything like that. Nothing. So he plans this adventure. He's going to go out into the desert. And uh, 50 miles from the nearest town, way out into the middle of the desert with his truck. And he's going to have a, a little boondock or whatever, you know, or he's going to have a little bit of fun. So he gets out there in the middle of the desert. And for the first time ever, his truck breaks. Like maybe a wheel bearing breaks or something like that. And there's no moving it. He suddenly realizes his predicament. He's got no water, he's got no food, he's got no radio. Nobody even knew where he went. He didn't tell anybody. Suddenly he's in big trouble. The truck let him down. Well, I'm going to tell you guys what. This system that we live in has been so reliable, like that truck. All my life, 62 years, I've always been able to go to the grocery store and get whatever I want. Anytime I want. Very reliable, like that truck. And we've all grown to rely upon it. But have we considered the possibility that it could let us down suddenly and leave us stranded out in the desert with no food, no water? The system. Think about that for a minute. Now, I got an emergency to talk about on here. There's something happening tonight. It could blow over and be nothing. Or it could be extreme. Just don't know yet. We're going to get into talking about that. Now, the Pope declared 2025 a holy year. And he's talking about uh, debt forgiveness and everything in here. They're talking about uh, uh, quite seriously, uh, where was it? Uh, Pope appeals for clemency, debt forgiveness, during a jubilee. He's declaring a jubilee of 2025. Uh, Rome is tone-setting document for the upcoming jubilee of hope. Pro Francis, uh, he said he would sow greater hope in the world, including amnesty for prisoners and debt forgiveness, especially for developing nations. That's kind of something different right there. Uh, I figured you guys wanted to know about. Now in Ukraine, look at them. They're hard at work right there. And what are they working on? They're building model airplanes. Quite seriously. They're taking a, a, a model airplane a kit. <laughs> and they're turning it into a drone that can fly deep inside Russia. 
Uh, it says on April 2nd, Ukraine carried out its deepest strike into Russia since the war began and uh, uh, targeted a drone. Man, uh, uh, it, it went 1,200 kilometers, 600 miles beyond the border into Russia. And I guess what it looks like, it looks kind of like, uh, let me see if we can get a picture of it. Well, that's a small airplane right there, but uh, it looks something like that. I guess it's a kit that they put together and they can fly it in. Now, how come the Russians, it's just a little airplane going along, you know, maybe 90 miles an hour, I don't know, 80 miles an hour. Why can't the Russians shoot them down? You know, uh, it's just, I, f I find that kind of funny why the Russians just don't, pa I mean, it's only going along small, it's just a little airplane. Maybe they're not in the right place at the right time to shoot them down. I just don't know. Now, this is the emergency, guys. Tonight, it's hitting. And don't know what it's going to do. Don't know what the impact's going to be. And I don't think they know either. But we have had events. One of the most notable was the Carrington event. And what does the Carrington event look like before it hits? Because we know it's a solar storm, but what sort of conditions come together to make the solar storm turn into a Carrington event? We don't know. And so a powerful, rare solar storm is to hit the Earth today, and it could wipe out the Internet, it says. A powerful, rare solar storm hits the Earth today, and it could wipe out the Internet. The first such warning since January 2005. Uh, the highest dose of radiation hit the Earth uh, in 50 years, back, I guess, in 2005. The unusual solar may disrupt electronic devices like GPS, power grids. So, it might even knock our power out. We just don't know yet. Uh, it is classed as a G4 severe solar storm that's coming in tonight. And you're going to be able to see auroras in places you normally don't see the, the aurora borealis. So if you guys have never seen the aurora, this might be a more spectacular display than the solar eclipse was. And I know they made a monstrous big deal about the solar eclipse. But this might be a more spectacular display for more people if you've got clear visibility in the sky. Size widespread auroras are possible across most of Canada and a large swath of the United States on Friday night. Tonight. So if you got clear skies tonight, take a look. You might see the aurora for the first time you've ever seen it in your life. Uh, it says this event ranks as a severe G4 on the scale used to measure intensity of geomagnetic storms. G5 is the only level higher. So this is G4, and this is a strong one. Uh, forecasters with the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center uh, issued a geomagnetic storm watch ahead of the event, saying on Friday that watchers watches at this level are very rare. So this is a rare one. This is not something that is a once-a-month event or once-a-year event. This is like a once-in-20-year event. Now, here's another thing, guys, you didn't even know. Yesterday, uh, a big asteroid or meteor or whatever, the comet or whatever they want to call them, passed by the Earth very close. And guess how big it was? It was as big as the Great Pyramid of Giza, floating on by us at 50,000 miles an hour. But it went, I guess it went on by us because I didn't hear anything about it hitting. Uh, well, they said that it was going to miss us. What's all this stuff coming at us? So, like, one thing after another after another. Like, it's like, what the heck's going on? I mean, we didn't go through all this kind of stuff back uh, before COVID. Back before COVID, uh, I mean, the world seemed to be fairly stable. Now it's like one thing after another. If if it's not a weather event, if we're not having a, tornadoes all across the United States of America, 
we're having meteors fly right by our heads at the same time and and geomagnetic solar storms and wars breaking out in one place after another and earthquakes just constant earthquakes just can any of you out there tell me that this isn't weird what's going on in the world the last little while but it seems like we've been near having these near misses but getting away getting away getting away it's weird it's very strange <clears throat> some new disease and i saw this this morning i can't even pronounce it diosononopia or whatever <laughs> it calls it the invisible illness affecting millions around the world now i never heard of this before but then again you know about four years ago, we didn't all have a whole bunch of shots. It says, diastinopia, a neurological illness, affects a large number of people globally, but it, yet it remains relatively unknown and poorly understood. This condition arises when the atomic nervous system does not operate properly, leading to a range of issues throughout the body. I never heard of this before, but, you know, could it be a side effect of something that we're doing that's causing this? Honest to gosh. I'm telling you guys, I don't believe this is the end of the world, but I believe it is something that's going on that, that I, 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 uh, I think that... Uh, it's going to lead to a conclusion. You know, and I'll tell you guys something else. You know, an awful lot of you guys ask me about real estate. How about real estate? How about real estate? As an investment and everything else. You know? Well, right now, real estate is a good investment. But I'm going to tell you guys something. I want you to think about it for a minute. Real estate is relying, like all these houses out there, the, that's generally the real estate market people are talking about when they say real estate. They're talking about ha the houses out there, and they're talking about buying houses or whatever, right? Houses have a huge reliance on one factor that it's, it's like anything. It's supply and demand. And what creates the demand is new families and new people out there who need a home. Right? What happens if there's a sudden diminishment, let's call it diminishment, in the world's population? Even in the, uh, the highly developed countries. Well, suddenly, all those people that are occupying homes right now aren't, aren't there anymore. If there's a population, uh, a sudden decrease in the population. So you got a whole slew of empty homes. What happens to the price of homes then? If there's too many of them to go around, they're all empty. Just something to think about, you know. Uh, in times where what could cause that to happen well our food our food around the whole world like I say is is it goes back to that thing I talked about where the guy was out in the desert or whatever it's just in time delivery we've relied upon this system to deliver us food and everything else that we need to survive and it all operates now off the internet I mean, this geomagnetic storm that's coming in tonight alone, let's just take the devil's advocate and say it was, it's, it was worse than they expected and knocked the Internet out permanently across a quarter of the Earth. What would happen? Trucks can't deliver food anymore if the Internet's gone. They, they do all their distribution now uh, over... They used to have books... They used to operate like a taxi cab office, you know, where, you know, the taxi cab have, has the guy that in there, I can't think of what his name is called, but he takes the phone calls and he arranges which cab's going to go out and pick up which people. 
Well, well, they and they have books. They used to have books. Now, I guess they're going on the internet and doing all that. And, and and the trucking companies have long since went on the internet and they do all that, all that booking and everything. Cut the internet off. They don't know where to go. <laughs> they're sitting in the warehouse and when are we going to get orders, boss? To go what store? Oh, I don't know. The internet's down. It's all messed up now. We got any secondary systems to, to work this, work around? We used to do it on paper. We used to have a guy that would, the, the people in the company would, and that wasn't that long ago either they did it all on paper. The guy would go into the office and he, he would have it on a book written down where the guy was, what store he was supposed to go to deliver. Now if the internet doesn't turn on, they don't know where to go, what to do. What a system we're creating for ourselves. But the system has no redundancy in it. They've put no redundant systems in place to protect us if the system fails. And if the system fails, there's going to be no food. And I'm going to tell you guys what. No water either. You don't survive for very long. No. Oh, these people, they don't have anything stored away from themselves. These big cities and stuff. You see those water towers, you know. They can provide pressure for a little while. But when they turn on the city, turns on a city water redundant system. They generally don't run them things very often. You know, <clears throat> even when they start running those things, the water's going to come out brackish and brown. Because they, they've, it's a secondary system that they... They probably up and test it once in a while, but it's only going to run until those tanks, those gravity tanks, run empty. And about two weeks later, and the city's got no water. And people only last for 24 hours or 48 hours without water. They'll be drinking water from the dirty mud puddles. And then they get sick and dysentery. And then you've got uh, uh, disease spreading that's waterborne illnesses and what are they going to do? Well, they'll shut everything off and put a quarantine in and lock you into the city so you can't even get out because they say it's full of disease. And you think they can't do that? Just take a look at what happened in Wuhan, China when, at the outbreak of the COVID epidemic. They put bulldozers across the road and they said, you ain't getting out of here. A Wuhan. This is like, was it, like 10 million people were stuck in there? Yeah, they can do it in a heartbeat. And don't think any country can do that. Not just China. You know? I'm telling you, this world we're living in, it's an awful lot more dangerous than people think. Uh, you, I had another article here. Uh, how bad things are. Uh, where was it? I'm trying to find it here. Uh, I know I had it. Anyways, about the bird flu. They're preparing for that now. And they're saying it could kill one out of four people when it comes. If everything else wasn't enough, you know. So we're going to get in there now. We're going to take a look at the markets. Enough doom and gloom. Get yourself out there and and and, and prep. I was working at prepping all day. Uh, I had to, so much food and stuff I had to put away. Uh, but will it do you any good? That's the thing. Is because when the system goes down and fails like that, uh, what about all your friends and neighbors down your street that haven't prepared? Uh, they might be eating your preps. <laughs> because humans, I'm going to tell you what. When the push comes to shove and it gets down to starvation times, they can become pretty damn savage. It's our primal instincts come out in our species. 2831 for silver today. It's down uh, it's down a little bit, I guess, down 
0.02%. It hasn't moved down much. It's holding up above $28. $28.31 today. Now, gold today is at $23.66. You know, I, I can tell you, I, I figure most of the people in my audience probably have at least some measure of preps going on already. And some of you guys out there are way ahead of me. You know? Uh, I'll tell you where I am at the prepping thing. Uh, I'm at the point where if the crisis were to occur tomorrow morning, uh, I would probably have about three months of the food I like to eat. Three or four months of the food I like to eat. And then the food I don't like to eat, I'd have a lot more of that. It would probably extend me out to probably close to a year before I'd start completely running out of food. Uh, and I'd be eating grass by the time that year was out. Grass and crickets or whatever, peeling the bark off the trees, whatever, you know. A year, a year's worth of food, basically, you know, and then, then I start to probably run out, but I'd like to go in and I'd like to put that up to a year, 1.5 years. I just don't know how long this thing would last. Honest to gosh, you know. But water, I got a lot, enough water to probably last me about four months. But during that, if this crisis were to occur during that period in time, maybe about a month in, because I want to make sure that this ain't going to cure itself, I mean. And then I would start building my water machine. Uh... What I would do is I would take and uh, build on a big fire with maple wood. Cut down maple wood trees, build on a big fire, dose it with water, collect the charcoal, crush the charcoal probably into a powder and leave a few small lumps into it and put it inside a pipe in la different layers with sand, a layer of charcoal, a layer of sand, and I'd make a gravity water machine that I could filter out about five gallons a day through charcoal filters. And I'd probably hope to have that completed by no later than the second month in. So I'd still have two months of regular water supply. And then I would start be able to start refilling my water bottles. Of course, I'd boil the water too. So water I can produce. Food's a bit trickier, you know. In the climate that I'm in right here, we have a very short growing season. And it only comes around once a year. You know, and we get frost straight up until the end of May. We can get these. It's it's weird because we get good growing weather in May. But then we'll get these out of the ordinary frosts that'll come along in May. But we don't get them in June. And so we got June, July, and August, basically. It's your three growing months, pretty much, you know. A bit of May, June, July, and August. And, but it's only one growing season. So you can only put crops in once a year. Uh, now, I would just love to be in a place where you could put two crops in in a season, or even three. You know? Because I, I see that as a much more easily survivable place, as far as food is concerned. And, you know, I think food's going to be the big thing. Food. Because war is going to take our food away from the world. War's coming in really hard. Uh, a second thing is our food supply is connected to the internet. And if they start to, during war, if they start cutting internet cables and stuff, it's going to directly impact our food supply. we already seen how that, that happened in the Russian war with Ukraine and how Ukraine's food basket was threatened by the by the war scene so gold today is up twenty dollars on the day so far it doesn't look like it's translated over the silver uh so that would mean that the gold to silver ratio is going even more askew you know days like today probably what would that translate into gold up twenty dollars and silver's not moving uh what maybe one or two percent change in the gold to silver ratio well maybe one percent i don't know small percent anyway 
but not in the right direction. And we're going to get moves when this thing comes unhinged, and it's going to come unhinged, gold and silver, the price of gold and silver. When silver really gets moving and gets fire under it, it's going to change the gold to silver ratio. Silver's going to move higher faster. Uh, silver hasn't taken off yet. You, you guys out there think, oh, we, was, this is late in the bull rally for gold. This <laughs> is such a joke. But there's a lot of thinking like that out there. This is just the beginning. We're in the opening parts. It hasn't even really got a, a flame under it yet. 23.64 for gold. You ain't seen nothing yet. It's basically what I'm telling you guys. 62,940 for Bitcoin. 63,000 right now. 63,008. Ethereum is at 30.23. And XRP is at 51.3 cents. Now, there's almost like a mini war going on between the... Uh, the things asset classes that are outside the dollar which is cryptocurrency gold and silver almost like a mini war you know which one uh, which one which one which one to buy we'll buy them both because you don't know which way it's really going to go uh cryptocurrency is going to go big if if we can retain our modern lifestyle in other words if we can all have our cell phones and all have our internet cryptocurrency is probably going to go pretty big because it can do things gold and silver can't do. It can be instantly sent across the internet. You know, it fits in with the modern lifestyle. But if our modern lifestyle starts to get crushed by things like war, and you can't rely upon the internet anymore, you can't rely upon, then gold and silver are going to... In other words, if things are really bad... Gold and silver is going to do better, and if things are not quite so bad, it gives an open door for cryptocurrency. And But they're both going to do good. They're both going to do good, but which one is going to be the, the real big one? The big one, that's what I'm talking about. Which one's going to be go to the moon and beyond? The stars. Which one? You know? Because somebody's going to be a big winner in all this. The fiat currencies are dying. And it's been a slow death up until now, but the final part's going to be pretty darn quick. It's, it's uh, As far as the fiat monetary system, it's almost like grandma's on her deathbed. You go in to visit her. Oh, she's dying. You better get in here quick. So you drive in to the hospital. She's dying in her deathbed, but then she recovers. Three years goes by, and you get the same message again. Oh, grandma's going down. You drive halfway across the country and the same thing happens. But when the final act comes, it's going to happen fast. You might not even be able to get there. And that's the way with, with this whole thing. The cryptos is, is Bitcoin, gold and silver and the final act of fiat currency going down. It's gonna ha it'll happen suddenly and unexpectedly when you least expect it. And all these times you've been expecting it to happen, it didn't happen. You got delayed or whatever, you know. But this this final the final act is going to be fast, boom boom, and it's going to be brutal. And gold, silver, cryptos, when they realize that the fiat really is this is this when they finally realize, hey, this is real. The dollar is becoming toast when they finally realize that. And there's going to be a mad rush. There's going to be so many people going after these non-dollar denominated asset classes. Trying to get out of the dollar and get into something real. That it's going to be like Niagara Falls trying to squeeze through a garden hose. The pressure on these non-dollar denominated asset classes to go up. Because everybody's going to want them. It's going to be all demand... No supply. Right now, it's like a balance between demand and supply. I mean, no balance there whatsoever. It's going to be all demand, no supply for gold and silver. And I'm thinking that the overflow is going to run into cryptos if the internet is still on at that time. 
then the overflow could be absolutely tremendous. When gold and silver is, is gone, you can't buy it at any price, then the overflow for, for, for crypto could be trillions and, trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions upon trillions trying to escape a, a, a doomed system where they don't want their money to go to zero, but it's going to go to zero. And, you know, this could really, ha really, this could all happen rather quickly when it finally happens. Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 169 points at 39,557. Bonds and rates today, we're seeing rise in yields. The U.S. 30 years risen 3.2 basis points to 4.63. And the U.S. 10 years at 4.48 has risen 3.9 basis points. Now, I, I, what I think's going on is, I think that the Fed, you know, somehow is, is, is I'm not going to say that they're all the only buyer in these things, but they buy for a few days, for a day or two, bring the yields back down a little bit, and then as soon as they stop, the yields start to spring up again like this, like today. And I think it's all about control, control of this market. I think they've been controlling this long end of the yield curve with these up and down movements we see. And see, they do their control for a day or two, and we see red numbers here. And then when the green numbers come, as soon as they release, relinquish control, it starts to bounce back right where it wanted to go. Uh, now, the dollar index today. It's going along sideways at 105.23. Thank you guys for listening to my show. Like and subscribe. We'll catch you guys uh, probably on Monday morning. Uh, but uh, I'm thinking probably uh, I'm going to see about getting a show done on Patreon this weekend. And uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend. And, uh, and enjoy the Aurora show if... That's all it is. Let's just hope that's all it is. It's just a show of the Auroras tonight. And that's it. And we don't have uh, a black house uh, Saturday morning uh, with no lights on. Let's just hope. But we don't have a Carrington. We do not have a Carrington event from this solar flare. But this it is going to be a rather strong one. So it's danger. And so I'm going to just write on my show danger today. Because that's the danger danger is a possible possible solar storm tonight bye bye guys